All right. Okay, start one. Two. I just get in from the beginning. Oh, I see. These are themed. They're themed by. I guess the difficulty is set by the grade level, but the theme is the models are grouped by theme. Does the same model appear in multiple themes? I'm going to do the first model in the first one. Go back to Great Adventure. Mm -hmm. Hey, oh, there's help. Let's see. Maria and Sophia. I see. So this is this is just some voiceover. Using the is this using the hub as the oh no this the hub's just on the interface plane. I thought it was using the hub as the as the as the pusher. All right. Oh, and go straight into instructions. How convenient. The hub is studless and has studless dimensions except here it's four, but otherwise five and seven, and this is studded of course. And I guess in, you know you could you could just jam a stud in there, but you're not supposed to do that. So Lego has made this part, which is half a pin and half an anti stud. So uh, well, let's just see. Like if I just gra drag the blocks out, I get this, right? So if I just do that, then. Now it even resets, which I guess that's fine, but it didn't feel, it's hardly programming because I'm just following instructions and there's no branching logic, but you have to think about this was for first and second graders. Even getting to this point was probably been a little sophisticated. I think it's odd that you can run the program, but, oh, so I've managed to stop it. So pressing this will start and stop it, but now the motor is, well, if you make it turn one full revolution, it doesn't matter where you start it. It will always launch the boat. Earlier, we clicked directly on this boat trip to start the lesson, and that gave us the student view. There's a little more down here. When you click on the more, it gives a description about what the challenge is, what's required. It's implied here that First off, this will take 30 to 45 minutes for beginners, and that there should be every two students will have one set. Here, there's view lesson plan, and if you click on it, there is a little screen to keep students from seeing it, but this hardly poses a challenge for us. And now, I guess this will tell you what you're supposed to do as a teacher. All right, so let's do this snack stand, which is the only one here that includes both an input and an output. Okay. okay. Let's test the program. All right. Okay, we have improved the snack stand, so let's take a look. First, if we show a blue ticket, it will bring out the snack, wait, and then it'll go back. But if we put in a red ticket, the snack will come out very aggressively. Oh, it doesn't even show you how you're supposed to build a tool. So we've made a safety toaster. Everyone knows that it's dangerous to stick your fingers or anything that's not toast in a toaster. So we've made it not possible to do that. And even if you do put something that's not toast in the toaster, nothing will happen. But if you put toast in a toaster, Okay, crazy carnival games, different than amusement rides. 
mini mini golf that's the copy so this will count the number of tilts which should be interesting I mean, when, when was the last time you saw one of those? I'm not sure this model has... Okay, this model does have a motor. A little unexpected. I thought this was going to be using the rotation sensor. This is, in fact, a 2X. And it's interesting that it's done by just actually showing it twice. I'm not sure why you wouldn't actually do it this way in, in instructions. This seems like a nice way to visually represent it. It probably is so that you don't have to page back when you're done building the first one. So all the program is, is if it's tilted one way, turn the other way. And then that will cause it to overshoot to the other side. And that's because the hub has a dead zone in the middle. And there's no turn the motor off in the dead zone. So if we start the program, during the dead zone, nothing will happen. But if you tilt it either way, it'll start running. So we've set the program to turn on a light in this pattern and then rotate the light around. However, we ran into our first bug. So let's start the program. And the light is sideways because this is the top of the light grid and there's no way to tell that from looking at the grid itself. So here, it starts out level with a light in the middle, but then Haha, <laughs> okay. Uh, this can't be that hard, right? <laughs> Are you smarter than a second grader? But word blocks. Okay, it's it's close. Is it one pass for each fig? Is that the... Yeah, so I wonder what the next part... If there's a next part of the challenge. <laughs> Improve the program. Go faster. <laughs> okay, there's our... New and improved program, which will give us time for the figs to get on and off, and plays a sound before the trolley starts moving. So, get on... And if I can find the button to start it. Okay, but now they're screwed because it's on the wrong side. So these are fairly easy models to put together and take apart, but you have to keep the context in mind. This is for this is an educational product for, you know, in this case, grades two to five in like a 45 minute class. So you don't really have that much time to spend putting it together and you have to get on to your actual lesson, which is programming it. Uh, and while it might seem simple to us where, you know, they just give you the default program that works, it's you have to give people you know you have to give your kids some place to get started and having that as a basis to improve the program and make your own changes there really helps part of the difficulty is probably looking at a program and understanding what it does and how it does that so you can even make modifications to it uh, i think that's a skill that's not explicitly called out here but it but it is teaching all right well in keeping with our other reviews we've tried to make a line following robot and so here it is. This is a little tricky because we only have two outputs. So this is actually fewer than the Scout, where you could use three sensors and still get two motors. So our one motor is here. When it runs forward, the robot will drive forward in a slight turn that way. And when it runs backwards, the robot will back up and turn this way. The other port has our color sensor here. 
And so it'll go forward when it sees white, and then when it sees black, it will back up slightly. Let's take a look at that. So the Spike Essential comes with a small hub which only has two outputs, and to do something more complicated you have to get a little creative. One of the sensors you do have access to at all times is the gyroscopes inside the Spike Hub, so we want to do something with that. Here we've got two motors, and we're going to control the motors using the hub, and we made a crane game of sorts. So the way this works... I'm going to stop it for a moment so you can take a look. We have quite the complicated program due to the need to use these word blocks. Now, we wanted to use the movement of the hub to control the motors. Therefore, we made a joystick. If you tilt the joystick left, this arm will go left, and if you tilt it right, the arm will go right. Like many claw games, you have to commit to grabbing, so if you push the joystick forward, the claw will attempt to hook one of these minifigs and then bring it back and drop it off here. Then it will wait until you return the joystick to the vertical centered position and you can continue to play. Let's take a look at that. First, it does nothing. You have to grab the joystick and return it to a center position. Now, right goes right, and left goes left, and if I push forward on the joystick, it will attempt to grab, then come back, and now I'll wait till I put the joystick back in the starting position. We've gotten it before, so it's less perfect than it looks. No, now I'm saying with the green hook right now. Got one. Here we've tried to build a rover. It's not immediately obvious you can do this with the Spike Essential, as there's only two ports, which means if you have two motors, you can't have any sensors. But there is the gyroscope, so we want to build a robot that uses that to navigate. Now it's got two wheels and some skids at the front. The idea is if you run into an object, that will tilt the hub like this. So now you can detect collisions from the front. We've added another degree of freedom here, so we can twist in the middle. And the idea behind that is if you hit on just one side, it will tilt the hub like that. And if you hit the other side, it will tilt the hub the other way. And so this way you can detect left, right, and center hits, depending on which way the hub tilts. Turn right seems to not be a reliable. See? No, oh, that was. was good, good. Oh, okay. That was definitely not. We've decided to do a classic robot project, the Logo Turtle. So we have two motors that can drive the robot forward, backwards, and turn it. And we have a mechanism that holds a pen. Here we've got a counterweight so that you're not putting a bunch of force on the pen. Now, driving straight forward and backwards will draw a straight line. And if you want to draw any other pattern, you need to be able to turn. We've set it up so the pen is just about where the center line of the wheels is. This way, when the robot spins, you draw, the pen will spin in place instead of drawing an arc if it were far forward. 
we've computed that to do a full 90 degree turn, you need to turn each wheel 0.8 revolutions. So let's give that a test. I'm going to lower the pen. And here's a program that's just turn the motors on half power and run them the correct amount. So let's watch what happens when we do that. So if you look, you can see that the pen went in a funny pattern and the robot sort of did the turn unevenly. We think why this is happening is that we told the motors to go 0.8 revolutions. But the two motors don't necessarily turn at the same speed at the same time. So one will finish before the other and you'll get this uneven movement. We wanted to figure out how to prevent that and maybe running the motors at different speeds would help. So we did one turn at a very low speed and one turn at a very high speed. And here are the results. At 10% power, making a turn, we get a small squiggle. At 100% power, making a 90 degree turn, we get a huge squiggle. Based on this, we think when we make the final program, we want to do our turns as slowly as possible. So what you see here are the results of our testing. A good way to test a logo turtle like this is to, one, make sure it can draw a 90 degree angle and a two, draw the same pattern repeatedly and see how consistent it is. So we have some test runs here. We tried drawing various squares. You can see some are not square enough and some are too much. Uh, some other issues occurred when the pen wasn't exactly centered. This is why it's important to center the pen or it'll draw a part of a circle when you make a turn. So we'll show you this program. We've got a drive slowly, go forward for a revolution, then turn point eight, that makes the turn, and then repeat that eight times, which will draw two squares. So I will lower the pen, and then let's run the program. 